Hello, everyone. So once again, we are here. Appreciate your attention. Let me express my gratitude to all of you and the mentors of the, our home here that gave me this idea or asked me to present that thing. So it's a pretty, let's say, pretty actual uh, subject. Everybody's interacting, social media and so on. So I would like to make just a question and just to have your opinion on that thing. So is there anyone here who think that uh, we can improve? I'm telling improve morally or intellectually in an insulated life. Do you think we can improve? If we go to the middle of the desert, leave it forever there? No? Okay, we are in the right direction. Yes, we cannot improve. So let me show you one thing here. Can you define improve? Because uh, yeah. that's, that's the question in our mind. Sure, absolutely. So improve, yeah. Improve, it's... Uh, so uh, if we improve our moral attributes, okay? If we are going in the God's direction. God created us to be perfect at the end. At the end of our, I don't know how many millions of years we are going to reincarnate, but at the end, we are going to be perfect like him. No, 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 no. This is not, this is, uh, you, need to, you need to come a lot of times here to, imp to improve yourself and give up about this team. He's using a mask of a, a Brazilian team that it's, uh, I will not mention anything about that. That's fine. Okay, let me show you the beauty of that thing and the, the natural, why we need to live in society. Look at that film here. If you can turn off the light here, I think it's better. It's amazing, right? It's amazing. It's natural, you see? We are born to interact, to hug each other. So remember last year when we are fully insulated sometimes? So we miss it a lot to interact with each other, right? To shake hands, to give a hug. So it's not the same as you open the camera in your phone. It's absolutely not the same. We need to, to feel the energy from each other. So it's natural, right? So this is a good example. They are, they are brothers, right? And I think this film was uh, virus in, uh, in the internet and uh, it presents so it's so natural, them hugging each other. Look at that. It's simply they reincarnated, right? Centuries, yeah. Look at that, that's a good example, right? But let's see from the, from the spirits. What the spirits told us about that thing, about social interactions, right? Humans must progress. We already discussed it here, we must progress. We are not going, we are not gonna improve. We are gonna improve all the time. If, even if we don't, don't want, you're gonna improve. Right? They cannot do so alone. However, since they do not all possess every faculty, they need to contact each other. So this interaction will give me experience. I will give experience to others. And then we are gonna, we are gonna grow together, right? In insulation, they become British and withered. Look at that. If you insulate yourself, you're gonna become rude. You're not going to develop as the other ones who are interacting. No single individual possess the complete range of faculties. So no one is perfect yet. You're going to be there. So we need each other to interact. 
I would like to know from your experience and share my experience with you, even if it's a bad experience, right? Any questions here? No questions here. So this thing was presented by, by Allan Kardec in 1857. It's about 160, 170 years ago, right? So, okay. So a reference for our tonight's reflection. So those two books of Kardec, the Spirit's book, basic to understand because all the presentation is based in the, the law of society. So we've got uh, Kardec presented in the Spirit's book, uh, 10 moral laws. One of these laws is the society law, the law of society, okay? So are the laws that are permanent, it will not change in the time, it's permanent. Those laws came from God and it impacts all of us. So if you deviate from any of those laws, you're gonna feel the instability. You're gonna feel that mm, I'm doing not so good because I'm deviating from those laws. And the law of society is one of them. So it's firstly presented in the Spirit's book and in the gospel according to Spiritism, uh, Kardec presented in a way, presented the moral laws using the, the gospel. So it's fantastic. Kardec was a, was a teacher and he knows how to explain the, the topics. And so he presented first and then he released the gospel according to spiritism and present examples in the gospel for those moral laws. And the, the law of society is one of them. And I've got two other books here. Uh, they, ha they are only in the Portuguese edition but they are the, a good reference for what we're going to discuss. This one in orange here, it presents the, the moral laws and the, the mental health. One of the topics that we're going to discuss here is about the mental health. And the other one is the, the integral man, this, the other one right here. And it presents the, the process that we need to, that we need to focus to improve ourselves in terms of psychological and mental topics, okay? So if you wanna go, uh, go deeper in, in the reflections of today, so I would suggest to take a look into those books. Okay, I talk about the integral man. The integral man uh, was a concept brought by Joana de Angelis. Joana de Angelis, she is the mentor of Divaldo Franco. Divaldo Franco is one of the, the greatest medium that we have. He has a, a lot of books, not only from Joana de Angelis, but from other spirits as well. And Joana de Angelis presented the psychological series. And one of the books of the psychological series is this one right here, The Integral Man. So let me try to explain to you what is the, the Integral Man. First of all, let's go to the basics. Integral, what does that mean? Integral means a complete unit, a whole. So it's a completeness, it's a status quo. If you are complete, you are integral. It's like the whole milk. The whole milk, it's integral, right? So that's the concept of integral. So let's expand that thing. So to be integral, a human being to be integral, he must develop in all aspects, psychological, social, intellectual, emotional, all the aspects, all the psychological as aspects and moral aspects we need to develop until reaching the fullness. As I said, be perfect. Fullness is gonna be the perfect. We are a bit far away from that, but we are going that direction. Okay, and what does that mean, fullness? Fullness means complete in every particular, totally qualified. So if we think, if we think about ourselves, okay, do we think that we are 
totally qualified in terms of moral? Probably, probably not, right? 99.99999% that we are not totally qualified. That's the reason we reincarnated. We reincarnated to improve. And we need to reincarnate as many times as we need to reach the fullness. So the integral man is a process. I'm going to explain it later. So let me give you one example of someone that is very famous, I think, right? Everybody knows him. So if I, I, I did a presentation close to the Christmas last year, presenting that Jesus is our major example. So he's the integral man. If you think about an integral man, Jesus is the one. Right? Because he overcome all wisdom limits and is the closest to God that we know. So he's, he's integral, right? He's, he completely developed all the skills inherited from God. So if you want an example of a, a man who reached the integral, Jesus is the one. Any questions here? I don't think so, right? <laughs> That's absolutely no question. And a good point in the spiritism is that the spiritism don't impose that thing to you. The spiritism explain, explains what, so we're explaining here. The integral man is a process. Give me an example. The example is Jesus of an integral man, right? I'm not imposing anything, but if you study, if you... If you study about Jesus, if you understand his message 2,000 years ago, so you're going you're gonna, to uh, prove that he is the integral man. Okay? Okay, let's go deeper into three other concepts here. The integral man that we just talked, the good person, and the perfect man. So it seems similar, right? It seems quite similar, but it's a little bit different from each other. Let me explain each of them. Integral man, we just presented. It's an improvement process. What does that mean? Changing our behavior. So if you are following that process, means that you're changing your behavior. But how can we change the behavior? It's decreasing the contradictions between your values, our values, and our actions. Right? So if we make this distinction between our values and our actions, we are going to change our behavior in this direction. It's a process. And this process will also raise our interaction with society to the maximum. As we said by the law of society, we need to interact with each other. So if not, the process will not, com will not be completed. Good person. What is a good person? A good person is a consequence of the improvement. It's presented also in the, in the gospel, according to Spiritism in the chapter uh, 17, item number three. So Kardec brought this definition, what is a good person? Sometimes I think I'm a good guy, I'm a good person, but what is exactly a good person? A good person is a consequence of the improvement. It's having unconditional faith in God and the future. Do we have that? Think about yourself. Sometimes you think that God is punishing me. Sometimes you think that God is, is not to look at me. So think about that. So when we separate the material goods from the spiritual goods, so we've got a, a, a quote from, from Jesus where he presents that we need to bring, we need to keep the spiritual goods because the spiritual goods will not face rusty. That's it. So if we detach the material and if we keep tight to the spiritual goods, we are in the 
position of a good person. Having natural pleasure in serving or helping others and comfort, comforting those who suffer. Are we doing that? Are we doing that sometimes? Not completely. But that's a good person. Performing the law of justice, love, and charity in its purest form. This law right here is one of the ten moral laws that I, that I uh, described it in the beginning. So the law of justice, love, and charity. Charity. What is charity from your perspective? He gave an example in the beginning about should be anonymous. So what you give should be anonymous to the person that you give should be fully anonymous. But is charity only this concept? What charity means? Can someone raise a hand and explain exactly what charity means? It's just to give money, give food. Sometimes, like, um, when, I give, when I give uh, an example here from Paulo, which is one of our friends here, one of the workers, he was buying food, and there was this, uh, this guy living in the street, and he bought food for him, but not just gave the food, he sat with him and started chatting. So he just gave him the perspective. Spiritual he food. Yeah, he is a human being. He humanized him back. Exactly. Exactly. Forgiveness is one. Let's see, you've got three legs. And um, you, you've never seen a U Haul, a U Haul behind a hearse. You know, so you can't take it with you. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of inequality, and some people have more than others. And, um, but uh, I, think, I think a lot of this is a mental problem. Sense they get, you know, that's what it is. Oh, you're right. You know, and, uh, if stealing is, is so bad as a part of the plan, then imagine how good it looks in God's eyes, given it away. So yeah, it. yeah. So reversing that. You're right. So if we could summarize, uh, so that's exactly what he's talking about. So we've got the concept in our mind, but are we practicing that thing? So to practice charity, Basically, that's what he said, what he said, but Kardec brought what we need to do is basically benevolence, indulgence, and forgiveness, right? Benevolence, what, what is benevolence? It's to be good, okay? Let's be good. Let's play good. Let's play fair. And what is indulgence? In, what is that? It's let's say, treat the others the same way that you like to be treated. Right? That's the maximum of charity. And what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is not to forget. Forgiveness is to understand that the other, the other one who could affect you, who is giving you some kind of uh, not a good feeling, this, the, the, the other person is in the same journey as yours. He's moving forward in the same direction. But sometimes he took a different way. You're taking that way, the other person is taking the other way. So it's up to him to change the way if he wants to change. But for you, don't worry about him. That's forgiveness, right? Any questions here in the difference? Basically, the difference here is integral man, improvement process. Good person is a consequence, right? And the perfect man. Who's going to guess the perfect man? Oops, what happened here? Who's the perfect man? 
So I did the spoiler before, right? Is the example to be followed. So the essence of perfection is charity. That's what I mentioned. So he proved that thing. What he did in his short passage here, incarnated among us, is charity in the pure, in the pure term. So if you want to see charity, here, take a look into his actions. And he mentioned here, therefore to be perfect, even as your Father who is in heaven is perfect. So he showed us the direction. Look at that. Go to this direction. Follow me. And that's it. Spirit's book, question 625. It's one of the trunk questions inside the Spirit's book. Any questions about this difference here? Those three concepts here? Good. So, let's go to this point right here. We are, we are searching the process to improve, right? We are in the process to be the integral man. So to do that thing, we need to interact in the society. We need to interact with each other. That's what we are going to talk tonight. How are we going to interact? What are the challenges? Improvement process. Basically, we have an improvement process that it's internal. That's the main one. It's coming from us. We need to deep dive inside us, identify what's not going so well, self-knowledge, and then I'm going to improve. And also, we receive some kind of friction from external, right? That will push us in one di direction. Sometimes it's in a bad direction, but our self-knowledge, our, our understanding of ourselves will make, make us to change, if you want to change, free will. And the internal and external, they interact with each other, right? We're depending on developing, and we're depending on the others to develop also because we need to have this interaction. And what is the key for the, the key for the internal, self-knowledge? So question 919, Spirit's book. Know thyself. Know yourself. And external, what is the key for the, for this uh, development from the external power? The key is exactly interaction with society. That's the reason we cannot live insulated from each other. We need to make that friction with the society. We need to interact with the society. Okay, challenges. Once we've got the friction, once we've got those actions and reactions, cause and effect, we've got challenges. So as in the spirit, so we mentioned everybody here is thinking is in the direction to improve, to become a perfect man. When? I, we don't know. But we are going to be a perfect man one day. To do that thing, we need to interact with society, right? But this will bring a lot of challenges. How are we going to face those challenges here? Because those challenges here will give us frustration, will give us stress, right? How can we, how can we handle that? We need, we need to interact with people, but the interaction with people will give me those challenges here. But I need to face them. There's no escape for that. I need to face them. Family relationship, social phobia, hypocrisy, wow. Isolation, as we talk a bit, and degenerative conflicts. Those topics here were brought by Joana de Angelis in the book that I mentioned, in the, in the uh, Integral Man. And uh, Dr. Sergio brought some considerations in, uh, in his book as well. So I just pointed here five challenges. If I ask each of you, you're going to bring more than 10. 
maybe more 20 or something, but let's focus on them. I think those here are the main ones that we are facing nowadays, right? So let's discuss each one of them. Family relationship. Wow. Do we choose our family when we incarnate? Yeah. But it's a fatality, right? You are here. Your free will will not change your family, right? Your free will. No, I don't want to be a son of someone. No, no, you are. You are. It's a fatality. So what Shruana Jiangel is brought to us? Reincarnation planning. Each one of us decided, I'm going to reincarnate in this family because this family is the best suited for my improvement, for my development. So we decided, why are we avoiding the family relationship? We knew before, when we incarnated, when we work with our mentors to plan our reincarnation, we discuss it. Oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a, a, a son of a father that in the previous life I had some conflicts. But I need to have him again in my family because I need to compensate that. I need to fix that thing. So that's reincarnation planning. So think about your family relationship in that terms. Don't think about, oh, what a family I've got. No, think about the family. It's our unique opportunity for our evolution. It's an opportunity. Don't think that your family is a punishment. It's an opportunity for us to improve. So if you've got a problem in a relationship problem, work with this relationship. At least do your part. Don't wait for the other. Do your part. Right? So much of the pandemic just make us look at the family again. Yeah. Because it locked us with It locked us inside the same home. Exactly. No more three hours with the kids. Yeah, but you see th this challenge here, the problems, the issues that happen, it increases a lot. The family friction inside, even the violence inside some homes. Because they don't think with that. That's a good thing from the spiritism. And Joana Diana said, look at that. You ask it to be in that family. You ask it that. It's the first cell. It's the first cell. Yeah. It's the first cell. How can you deal with society if you cannot deal with your family? Right? So the recommendation seems simple, but it requires an effort, right? It requires an effort. Seems simple, but requires an effort. Continuous effort. Carry out possible family conflicts with courage. Yeah, it, it, go. Talk to them. Try to fix it. And mainly charity. We talk about charity. Right? Charity. Serve. How can I help you? Right? I forgive you. If you don't forgive me, it's not my problem. I forgive you. And move forward. So do your part. Do our part, right? Family relationship, it's like social interaction cause friction, but can we solve? Can we solve? We can, of course. It's only depending on us. Don't, oh, the other part is not changing. Change yourself. Change yourself and see if the other part will not change, but do your part, right? Next challenge here, hypocrisy. So social network exposes that thing a lot, right? We see a lot in the social network. People exposing themselves in a way that we know that it's not true. It's not the way that they are playing. So look at that. We talk to each other. This is a good example. It's a charge, but it's a good example, right? They are talking to each other like a fake person, right? But they're using guns and blame each other and so on. Hypocrisy. How can we deal with that? Love, the agape, not the love, the, the arrows one. The agape one, which is the charity, must occur without any pretense. 
Don't be fake, right? And you see this from, from James 3, 7 here. The wisdom from above. They put a lot of adjectives here. And the last one, look at the last one. Without hypocrisy. So if you are facing hypocrisy, even for you, you need to know yourself. So I'm saying that thing, but I'm not doing that, that thing. So the wisdom from above. If you want to follow the perfection, if you want to follow the process, wisdom from above is the key, right? Jesus, we prove Jesus on that without hypocrisy. Forget about the others. Think about yourself, right? Think about with your heart. Uh, am I a hypocrite? Think about that. Am I doing the thing that I'm talking about, that I'm presenting? Think about that. Recommendation. Pretty simple, but also requires an effort. Sometimes it's a huge effort. Be authentic in social relationship. Don't be fake. Right? You know when someone is faking to you. So are you faking to the other one? Try to see if you're not faking. Right? And important part, be sincere to yourself. Self-knowledge. Self-knowledge. Am I doing something that it's, uh, is not authentic to me? Right? Effort. Is it difficult? It's labor, right? It's effort. It's depending only on us, not depending on others. Only on us. Any questions here? Social phobia. It's pretty common nowadays, right? People who avoid each other. People avoid speaking in front of others. People very, very shy. It's the first step to insulation, first step to depression, and so on. So let's see how Joana uh, presents to us the social phobia. Most of the social phobia is coming from our past incarnations, right? It's something that you're going to be here. You need to fight against that because it's coming from your, I don't know how many lives, we had, and we are putting again, because as, uh, as uh, Peter liked to say, God will give you one exam. If you fail in this exam, he will not present you the same exam, the same verbiage and so. He will present the same question, but with a different verbiage until you pass the exam. Social phobia is something like that. You're avoiding I'm so afraid of that thing. I'm so afraid of interacting with, with others because I had a, a heartbreak. So move forward. Identify what happened to you. What caused your heartbreak? Move forward. Identify that. So most of the time, it seems that uh, you are not suitable in the complexity of social life. So that's what we are diminishing us. We should not diminish us, right? We should bring us up. So why I'm feeling out of the society? Why I'm feeling afraid of them, right? Think about yourself, not blame others. Think about you. Recommendation, psychological treatment, because this is the first step for a depression sometimes. Okay, don't let that thing increase. Ask for a, for a psychological treatment. And also, sometimes you need spiritual treatment. And the house here offers every Wednesday, 7 o'clock. If you think you need, so come here. We are going to be happy to support you and help you on the treatment. Identification of the causes. Once again, I'm repetitive here, right? 
Self-knowledge, 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 self-knowledge. Social interactions will force it, will force us to perform self-knowledge. Right? Yeah. Know thyself. Question 919 of the Spirit's book. So you can fight the, the social, this, this challenge with self-knowledge. If you do your self-knowledge, you're going to be strong to fight or to, uh, to face those challenges here. Okay? Let's see the next one. Isolation. So I mentioned that phobia could generate an isolation that could generate a depression. Depression could become worse and worse and tragic, right? So how can you avoid that thing? Insulation. If it's a prolonged for a long time, it's a mechanism to escape from reality. So think about that. Am I trying to escape from reality? I live in reality. I cannot escape from reality. So let's face the reality. Insulation is an alert for us that, oh, you're going to move away from the reality. And emphasize, look at that, egoism. It's weird, right? Because you are so insulated, but actually you are playing as an egoist. Why? Because others will need your experience to improve. And you are interrupting that thing. You are not offering your help to others. The same way that you are not accepting help from others, you are not offering your experience to others. You are not interacting with society, which means that you are not, we are not going to improve. What's the recommendation? Once again, psychological treatment. Go to a psychologist. Talk to him. Self-knowledge. Right? And a good tip is that try to identify using your self-knowledge, what issue in the community, in the society, can motivate you. For example, if you want to participate in a group, participate in a team, participate with a, with a charity group or study group, whatever, think what motivates you. Think about that. If, you think about, if we think about that, you're going to find something that will motivate you to interact with others, right? To play with others, to be with others. It's important, right? Good tips from Joana, right? Conflicts, oof. Right now, once again, social network. So when I saw someone fighting with other using social network, sending message, fighting. So how can you do that thing? How can you think that this is not going to solve the problem? So how Joana explained that thing to us? Pretty simple. Joana is straight to the point, and she, show, she shows us all the time what is the topic. The man has not yet learned to be supportive when he does not agree. Fight. Simple, preferring to be an opponent. Instead of reach a common sense, we prefer to be opponent, to fight. So that's insane, right? So simple. And also it's a consequence of the, the personal security. It's a misconception of our personal security, which means that it seems that we are, having is more important than uh, then it's more important than, uh, than to be something, right? Having is more important, and it's presented by the power. If I have more power, it means that I have more things, I'm very strong, and I can fight to anyone, and then I can, I can be better than anyone. This is against the, the, the law of society. The law of society is that play, play your role at the same level as others, and help each other, if I could summarize here. Recommendation here. So simple, right? Respect for others. Second commandment for, from Jesus. 
So simple. Golden rule. Love your neighbors as yourself. Do for others what we would like others to do for us. So if you start a fight, stop. So am I going direct, direct, in the right direction? So if I'm on the other side, so would I like that? Of course not. So stop, think, know yourself. What's going on? Why am I doing that thing? Stop. Okay? How can we face those five challenges? Do we depend on others to face them? Yes or no? Do we depend on others to face those challenges? Do we depend the others to change? Or do we depend on ourselves? So don't worry about the others. Worry about yourself. Improve yourself. Go the right direction. We need to interact with others. So, Joana. Fantastic. She summarized here. Look at that. Let's read together. The society must be responsible for the people that compose it, right? We are responsible. If someone is doing bad, try to bring him in. Try not to push him out. For the conflicts that it produces, so we know a lot of conflicts, right? Nowadays, a lot of conflicts. As well as for the glories and achievements, teamwork. So if, if I improve, if I help the other to improve, society will improve. So simple, why we are fighting? Why we are pushing each other? Makes no sense. The degenerative social conflicts tend to disappear. It's gone. When man, by finding himself, self-knowledge, once again, harmonize his individual cosmos. So if we harmonize ourselves, if we know ourselves, we can collaborate for the balance of the social universe, the macro. We are a piece. It's small, but this small piece could generate a fire. So let's not be the fire, right? Because we are embedded in the society. We are not insulated from the society. Let's remember that. Okay, remember the, the first question when we present in the first slide? That's the second part of this question here, 768. So it's the, the message from the spirits in the spirits book. So if we follow here, look at that. No single individual possess the complete range of faculties. We already mentioned that, we are not complete. It's true, the societal union. He's not saying it's true, the other to forgive you, it's not to the other to help you. No, it's true, the societal union, which means different parts playing together. That individuals complete one another. I'm going to complete you, you're going to complete me, and vice versa, and so on. We are going to multiply. In order to ensure their own welfare and progress. Look at that. Welfare and progress. Why we are, those challenges here is absolutely useless. It's, it will fight against our welfare and progress. Why are we putting fire, putting gas on those challenges? We need to, to fight those challenges. It is because they need one another that they have been created to live in society and not in isolation. I hope that we don't have any questions about that. I hope that because sometimes we heard that someone is saying, I want to leave. I want to I want to be alone. I want to stay alone. I want to I want to live in the middle of nothing, the middle of nowhere. So the point is that 
he's planning to do that thing, I think he, the person will not, will not uh, be happy after a year of insulation. Because it's someone, I presented the film in the very beginning. It's our nature to hug each other, to talk to each other, to fight sometimes. Fight in the good sense, not fight like that. But present my opinion and let me hear your opinion back. Right? That's a good fight. Okay? So that's the topic for today, to live in society. So let's, uh, let's express the gratitude to God to put us in the society that we are embedded because that's the society we need for our improvement. So if you're not satisfied, try to be satisfied with your society. How can you help to satisfy yourself and maybe satisfy others, but satisfy yourself, okay? Thank you, thank you for your attention.